to know your personality and the more that they want to engage with you. Um, so today we're going to be talking about a lot of really great things um, of how to build your brand, which is what it's all about. Uh, how can we get more clients and how can we get more money in our pocket? Uh, so before we get started, I just want to uh, throw this out there. The Real Estate Technology Institute is able to put on uh, these weekly webinars uh, every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. We do it because we want to help this industry. Uh, we want to help you as an individual. We want to help you and your brokerage, your associations. We want to help raise the bar in this industry. So um, the only way that we're able to continue doing it is through subscribers to our website, reti.us. Uh, we do have a promotion uh, running uh, most months. It, it varies uh, every month. This month, I believe you can get the first month for $4.95. Uh, which is absolutely awesome. RETI is filled with uh, videos, uh, tutorials, um, app reviews, software reviews, um, basically any technology topic in this industry. So I really hope that you consider uh, taking the opportunity to sign up. Uh, you can always go and check it out for free. There are, I believe, 20 separate videos and different content that you can engage with, but please consider checking it out. Um, in this webinar, you should see in the offers section, um, just a way to take advantage of this month's promotion. Um, and of course, during the webinar, if any questions pop up, please feel free to send them through in the chat. I'll try to answer them during the presentation. Uh, but if not, I'll answer them as a Q and A. I don't think we'll be taking the whole hour, but it is possible depending on uh, how many questions come in from people throughout the, the presentation. So, um, that being said, I'm going to start sharing my screen and we will get started momentarily. The uh, how, why community marketing works, uh, ways that you can find the opportunities to get involved in your community, and then last but not least, how to actually take action on it. Uh, I am a firm advocate that our database is the most important thing. Uh, our sphere of influence, the database that we're marketing toward, that is by far the most important thing for any real estate professional. Uh, it's your bank account because, you know, statistically, people are going to buy or sell their homes every seven years. So you have an opportunity. One out of seven of the people in your database are going to be buying and selling homes. Now, some of you may deal with referral um, or for uh, people who are moving, but the reality is most of the business that you have is going to be within your market. So it's really important for you to get involved in your community so that you can build that sphere within your natural habitat. So why do people or why do agents avoid branding? Well, that's usually pretty simple. Number one, they don't want to limit their options. Now, I think the biggest thing here is that agents worry that by branding on a theme or a niche that they're going, they're going to lose business. They want to be everything to everyone. And the reality is you can't. Today's, uh, today's environment really requires an agent to have some sort of a niche. Why are they coming to see you? Well, maybe they know you personally, but outside of that, it might be because you work with, um, you might be an expert on this districts, right? You might be in of housing. Um, maybe it's new construction. Maybe it's condos. Maybe it's apartments. Maybe it's rentals, right? We all have to have this niche so that people are naturally coming to us outside of ways that we have to then find those clients. So you have to take both sides. You have to weigh or balance that. But ultimately, I think the biggest hesitation and why agents don't want to brand um, is because they don't want to limit their options. They want to be everything to everyone. Uh, and that leads right into the next one. You have a wide range of clients in all markets, and you think that you're going to lose business because you've done that. You're going to lose some of your past clients, which is my fourth point here. It's okay to work with people in a wide range of, um, I guess, specialties, but it's very difficult to do that long term. It ends up being much more of a short-term solution as you're building your business. Uh, but as you start, really, that niche is so, so important. Uh, the third is that um, they really, they've tried personal marketing and it doesn't work. 
Uh, <laughs> I hear this all the time. And as a marketing, a digital marketing uh, specialist, I just think that when people say personal marketing doesn't work for them, really what they're saying is that they didn't do it long enough or they didn't find the right technique. They didn't find the right medium. The reality is marketing takes a long time. It takes consistency. Uh, but you can't expect quick results. It's about creating your brand. It's about letting people know what you represent. Um, and so it is not a very quick process, but it is something that's absolutely critical. Um, and finding those, those specific traits that are going to appeal most to the type of buyer that you like working with and that there are enough of in your market to actually um, have a good book of business. Uh, the last is, in my opinion, mass appeal, right? We can't send the same message to a senior, to um, a baby boomer, and to um, a Generation X or millennial. Like, they, they all want different things. And also, even the way that we talk to them needs to be different. Like, uh, Generation Y, uh, or Generation uh, millennials and exes, they really want to be doing that work themselves. They want to feel like they're the ones buying or selling a house. So you always use the word you when you talk to them, right? Because it's about them doing it. When you talk to baby boomers, they're all about collaboration. So you use the word we. But when you talk, when you start working with um, seniors, they are a generation that respects authority. So you want to be using the word I, right? When we send a message, we have to know who our audience is. So breaking down your database and understanding who they are, uh, whether that's based on age, whether that's if they're married, whether they have kids, whether they have uh, pets, right? All of these things are great ways for you to find what niche is going to be best for you. What types of clients were the best uh, types of clients and which ones went through the process that faster? At the end of the day, it's all about consistency. There's no right or wrong answer here. You can build a niche any way. Uh, there have been a million different ways that people have done it, and all of them have been successful, and all of them have also failed. It all depends on execution, but consistency is the key. So what are the six essentials to building your brand? Number one, finding your brand. What makes you special? In a fiercely competitive real estate environment, it's essential to understand what is your competitive advantage. What do you do better than other people? What are you better at? Do you understand the market better? Do you have better relationships? Uh, what's What makes you special? Why should they work with you over somebody else? And as you think through these things, I want you to write them down, right? Look at these the, the lists that you come up with the words that really represent you and your company and your brand, and then put that into work for you in your marketing. Because if you don't write it down, you're going to have a different thought every time you think about this. You're going to come up with different words. Really take the time, brainstorm, define what your brand is and what makes you special. Use those words in your marketing and use them over and over and over because that's what a brand is. A brand isn't a logo. A brand is who you are and how you represent yourself. The second thing is understand your customers. Uh, understanding your target audience, it's going to allow you to arm yourself with intelligence um, of what drives them to take action. Why are they moving? Why are they buying? You have to, and like I said before, you have to know who you're talking to. You're looking at age, gender, personality, profession. Um, ultimately, the biggest part of sales these days is finding the pain points. How can you solve their needs better than your competitors can? If you can't answer that question, it's going to be very difficult to build business. Build your brand thinking of what you do better than anybody else. You're, they already know what you can do better. You're not going to ask those questions from your clients because your marketing is already showing it. Right. Number three is know your competition. Um, you have, in order to stand out, you have to know who you're up against. You have to then be better than them at it. Okay. Uh, the last, or I'm sorry, not the last. The third is about bringing, or fourth is bringing your brand to life. Once you've crafted what your brand is, 
you have to make some noise. You have to promote it. You have to promote it endlessly and consistently. That's through websites and blogs and social media and print and open house signs and ads and email blasts. It's every type of marketing out there. It's consistency and it's, it's all about making sure that that marketing is compelling. But there are other ways that you can build this. The, the uh, two things that I think are important, number one is telling your story, right? This is how people connect to you. Um, telling a personal story of why you've moved to that area. Why do you live in that area that you're trying to sell or buy or help people buy homes in? Why are you there? Why do you love your community? That's important. That relevant content it shows that you understand that area. And honestly, you're an expert. There's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be using your own personal story in your marketing. That's what makes you different, in my opinion. And then last but of course, today is all about community involvement. Community involvement gives you a really aggressive way to be out there and serve your market, serve your community. And in doing so, they're going to serve you back. And that comes through business. Okay. So we're going to walk through each one of these six things. Number one, defining your brand. First of all, this is, this is your self-audit. I want you to actually take some time to go through this. Number one, what are your achievements? Um, I know a lot of you like to say that I was the number one sales representative in volume in 2015 for my uh, regional Remax firm or whatever it happens to be. That's wonderful. And that is an industry achievement, but that's not something that a consumer necessarily finds appealing. That doesn't mean anything to them unless they were a part of why you got there, right? Thanking them for being a part of your achievement. But what are your personal achievements? Um, you know, did you run a marathon? Did, did you run a, one in your state or in your city? Did you help do a food drive, right? There are so many different things. Um, but your personal achievements, yes, some of them can be industry achievements, but really, I think you should think a little bit bigger picture. What makes you different than all of the other sales reps that can also stay? That within their frame of one sales rep as well. Uh, the second is describing your expertise. Uh, and you have to really understand it's difficult to be an expert in every type of property. Is con are condos, residential, luxury estates, cottages? What is it that you enjoy doing? That's that's probably one of the more important things. What do you enjoy doing? Uh, but also what do you know about? Then take those and start adding words that describe your personality. What types of words would you use? What types of words would your friends and family um, describe you as? And then what your biggest passions are. Now, you take all of those and you put them together. And that's what's going to help you shape what brand, the voice that your brand has. There are three ways people understand people. One is the what you say about yourself. The second is what others say about you. And the third is what they see you do or your actions. All three of them are critical to defining your brand. Now, when you do marketing, a lot of that marketing has to do with what you say about yourself. You can add in testimonials, referrals, case studies. That's what other people will say about you. But what you do is a very difficult one to get across in marketing. It, it, it is. But if you do things in your community and you can show that in your marketing, like giving back um, or community involvement, which is why we're on this webinar today, those are going really helpful in building your brand. So the next, understanding your customers. Who's your target audience? And I mean this. Who are they? What age are they? That's a big one. What, how much education do they have? What's their income? What's their personality? What are their professions? What do they do in their free time? If you don't understand who your customers are, 
Now, you can look at back on this for a couple of years, but you should also be thinking about who your ideal customer is. As you look back at all those deals, think which ones were the easiest and which ones were the most enjoyable for you. Real estate is, a, is not a, a couple year career. For those who are really making this a, uh, a true career, you, you have to invest for the long term. And you also have to invest in your sanity, right? There are those types of customers that you're just like, you know, you, you really would rather that you didn't sign that agreement with. There are others that it was, it was painless, right? That when you get that commission check, you say, wow, uh, you know, it didn't even really feel like that much work. Those are the types of customers that you want to keep getting. So focus on them. But you have to, you have to analyze who they are. You have to analyze what their pain points are. And then you have to ask yourself, how can you help them solve their pain points better than your competitor? Well, if you don't know what their pain points are, you can't answer that. If you don't know what your expertise is and how you can solve it, you're able to answer that question. And number three, if you don't know what your competitors are doing, you can't figure out if your solutions are better than your competitors. So it does involve an investment. You might already have all of this information in your head. And really, I'm hoping that you'll take this exercise to walk through it. Write down the answers and then look at it on a piece of paper. Sometimes when we look at things on paper or on a screen versus just what's in our head, we really can see a better insight of where we should be going. And that's what all branding is all about. So the next is knowing your competition. Um, I get asked this all the time. How can I beat out my competitor? Well, there's no simple answer, but the simplest I would say is know what they're doing that makes them successful and do it better. Like, you know, the, <laughs> I can't tell you how to do that. I don't know what your competitors are doing. I don't know what's making them successful. I'm sure you have other things that are making you successful, but ultimately finding out what they're doing, that they're doing right. All you have to do is do it better and the business will come. Now, the last thing is bringing your brand to life. You have to promote it. We all have different blogs or websites and most of us are on social media. If you're not, social media is a really great way that you can engage your community as well. There are a lot of local forums uh, uh, that you could consider. You could set up community pages. Uh, community pages are awesome, and it's a great way that people can see your name um, as they're, if they're not actually out in their communities. So for those of you who are not familiar with that, go and... Uh, look up community pages within Facebook. Uh, you can get other people to post pictures and comments and, you know, and you as, um, I guess, the person in charge of that page, people are going to see your name associated with it. So basically you're getting credit for all of this other content that you're able to get other people to put on it. Um, so that's just one thing I'll throw out there. Print collateral, email blast, signs. Ultimately, consistency is the most important thing here because you are in so many different channels. You are in so many different places. You have to make sure it's consistent. This isn't the same logo and the same colors. This is the same voice, right? Your voice. What people hear you say and how you say it about yourself is your voice. It means a lot. That's what people, that's their first impression of you. Make sure that it's consistent and make sure it's accurate. Sometimes people use words that don't actually represent what they mean. So just, you know, sometimes it's good to go through and verify that it is what you actually mean. Um, you want consistent and compelling images. You want to share positive testimonials, achievements, success stories. Um, in fact, They've shown that brands that are consistent are approximately 20% more value, valuable than erratic brands. So make sure that that can be a key part of what you're doing. Now, as you develop relevant content, it's not easy to do. 
Um, I, I've got to tell you, creating content on a regular basis is difficult, and knowing exactly what to write is difficult. There are some people who have done, you know, 365 things to do in my, in my city, right? And every single day they post something. Now, that is a daunting task. Um, if you're not into blogging or video blogging or, you know, whatever it happens to be of how you're going to share that content, if you haven't done it yet, don't make commitments. Don't, <laughs> don't do it too soon and tell people that they should expect this content and then you not follow through with that content. Start small. Do a post a month. Then build that up to one every two weeks. Then every week. Then maybe every day. But you don't want to overcommit and underdeliver. deliver uh, Making sure visuals, video, images are in your uh, posts uh, or your blogs, your social media posts, anything. That's going to increase engagement. Even your emails. Um, they found that emails that have videos in them can, are, I believe, over 70% more effective. Um, than just standard text emails. Anything that you put out there, I want you to think this uh, acronym W I I F M. Um, it's not an easy. It doesn't come off the tongue very easily. <laughs> I got to tell you that. Always think about this. What's in it for me? Not meeting you as the realtor. Think about what your client is thinking. What, when they're reading your content, they're thinking, what's in it for me? Why should I read this? What are they trying to get me to do? How is this going to help me or my life? So anything that you write, anything that you put out there, remember, you always have to think as though you're in the client's mindset and their mindset is, what's in it for me? And you also have to make sure your headline is something that's going to catch them. Um, we have only 33 to 36 characters to catch somebody's attention in a subject line of an email, okay? Uh, because more people are opening emails on smartphones as opposed to their computers, the subject line is really short. 33 to 36 characters, make sure that the subject line or the headline is something that's catchy, it's punchy. Um, I'd even go as far as say sexy. You have to make sure it's something that's going to catch their attention because if it doesn't, they're not even going to open it to engage with that content. Now, why we're actually on this webinar. It's all about community involvement. There are two types of community involvement, okay? And uh, real estate agents generally go towards one or the other, but both are really great options and there's no reason you can't do both. Number one is community giving, okay? Um, the second is being hands-on. That's volunteering. So you can, that's more the giving side, or you can be more of a volunteer, and that's the hands-on side. That's more the community involvement. Both can be very effective. It's just how you do it. And we're going to go over that in the next, uh, for the rest of this webinar. It's all about community involvement, in my opinion. So, why is it so important and why does it work? Well, number one, it's inexpensive. First of all, it's uh, keeping you close to the community that you're serving, and you don't have to spend a lot of money looking for clients because you are engaging with them every time that you're involved in the community. Every single time you're meeting new people, you're being engaged, showing that you are personally invested in your community, whatever that happens to be. For me, I'm a trustee for a local museum. I'm involved as a corporator for the local hospital. Those two things touch, well, the museum touches every single K-12 through student um, in my area. So for all of the parents, people who have kids, um, being a part of the museum is an absolutely critical piece to the puzzle of um, having a successful business in my market. The second is the hospital. Every, if you have an opportunity to get involved as an advocate or a volunteer or whatever it happens to be uh, for a hospital, it touches everybody. It touches, and a lot of the more elderly people as well, but it's really every single generation. The second thing, community grows. You're focusing, um, 
to help build and nurture your community, people form that emotional bond, which in turn creates loyalty towards you. They associate what you've done for the community as though you've done it for them. Okay, so it's really, really critical. The other thing is it's it's authentic. Right. We are we're always trying to be relevant with our customers and things that are helping them and what they care about, which is where they live. Um, it's critical and there, it's really hard to fake authenticity when you're actually out there helping uh, longevity. Of course, uh, if you're committed to creating a career, which I would hope that you are, we all are. Uh, being involved in your community is investing in your community, which means that you are going to have a lot more longevity there. Um, and it does it automatically for you. It really just builds and builds on top of it. Which brings me to the last one, which is trust. Everything Business these days is all about trust. Uh, if you give to your community and other people are a part of that community, it is basically saying that you care about the same things. And shared values are, of course, the number one thing that people can agree on. It's not about politics. At the end of the day, politics can either make or break you when you're talking to a customer. You're going to be right or wrong 50% of the time, right? In your community, caring about it, it doesn't matter what your politics are. It matters that you're actually doing something to make your area better. It's putting your money where your mouth is. And helping, it's all about that trust. So, now let's find those opportunities. If you're ready to get involved in your community, whether that's out of the goodness of your heart or whether that's for networking purposes, you want to get started little by little. Finding opportunities are easy. There are a million out there, and I'm sure you guys will come up with a ton on your own, but I'm going to give you 10 that are going to help you get started, okay? And that's, that's the majority of this webinar. It's going to be giving you examples of how you can get involved in your community. And some of them are focused on giving, while others are focused on volunteer work. Some of us like to give money. Some of us like to give time. Some of us like to do both. Both are options, but you have to weigh them out and obviously being present is a very critical piece to the puzzle okay so uh, number one we are oops sorry i'm going to go through these one by one so these are this is basically what we're going to be going through promoting local businesses participating in food drives sponsoring youth teams sponsoring events adopting a brick or a roadway uh holding contests scholarships participating in street fairs Rotary clubs, chamber of commerce, or just you know clubs in your area, sponsorship uh, or volunteer with hospitals, churches, schools, um, holding community garage sales for charities out with maybe local families that have had a local disaster, maybe a fire took their home or something along those lines, flooding things like that. So let's go through these one by one. Number one, participating in food drives. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> Number one, promoting local businesses. I'm sorry, I was getting really excited about food drives. I think I'm hungry. Um, okay, promoting local businesses. This is a really critical one, and it's been very effective for me. Um, as you visit more and more businesses in your community, uh, you understand all of the the assets that you're your area has. This also gives you an opportunity to write very useful content. Maybe it's restaurants in your area. Maybe it's hardware stores. Maybe it's um, construction places. But basically, any opportunity you have to visit a business, you should tell them what you do as well. Talk to them. The ones that you visit most are worth writing about. Other people should know about it. But you also want to visit them when they're not too busy. Tell them how you sell homes in the area and how you'd love to refer business to them, but that you'd also love to leave some uh, cards, right? Um, or maybe a flyer in their window. But when you create this relationship, these channel relationships, they're helping you promote your business and you're helping them promote theirs. Ultimately, your success gets tied together. 
the more local businesses that can promote you and that you can promote, it really works out best for everybody. And I can tell you, there are not that many realtors doing this. Find those businesses that make the most sense for the way what you do and figure out how you can create that relationship. Uh, but there could be shared promotions. You might want to turn to them and say, hey, I really want to run this uh, promotion. And for everybody who signs up for my newsletter, I want to give them a gift certificate um, to your business. Would you be willing to donate a gift certificate or maybe give me 50% off that gift certificate because I'm going to be promoting it to everyone in this area? Because then you have cross promotions. You're able to promote those businesses, and in return, they're going to be able to promote yours if you figure out the right details, okay? But, again, this is arguably the most important. The next, oops, I'm sorry. The next one is the food drives. Uh, food drives are a really great way to show that you care about individuals in your area. Uh, first of all, you can donate directly to a family in need of food. You can collect food through your brokerage or your office. You can uh, donate time at food centers. Uh, a lot of cities have food banks that will help you ch help you organize those charitable food drives. Uh, or you can even plan one yourself. Now, putting yourself front, front and center with this type of community involvement is going to be a, just a fantastic way to show that you care. Now, whether you do or you don't, whether or not, or just you actually want to help, this is a really good way to do it. There, there's a company called Move for Hunger. Um, it's a nonprofit. They started out in their own town. All they were doing for people who were selling their homes, they were moving. This company worked with a real estate brokerage and they said listen for all of your customers that are moving we'd like to come by with our food um, our food bank van and we'd like to pick up all the food in their cupboards and their refrigerator so that nothing goes to waste they turned it into now a national nonprofit that has trucks pretty much in every major city throughout north uh, at least throughout the US uh, that will Take food from people who are selling their homes. Often that food ends up in the trash. So you can get connected with existing charities that already do something like this, but you want to make sure that your name and your face is associated with whatever you're doing. This shows that you care, and it's a really, really important one too. It's taking care of those in your area. They might not ever be the ones to buy homes from you or sell a home with you, but it, it it's about caring about the quality of life in your area. The next is sponsoring a youth team. This is for people who like to, would rather give money, um, in my opinion, for this first one, uh, as opposed to giving time. You could, you could sponsor the uniforms for your youth recreation department. You could have your company's name um, or logo on them. Uh, uh, you know, there are different ways, that, but that would be really a great way to build your brand. There are parents at every single one of those games. And not only are they there cheering on uh, your home team, but there are the away teams and the parents from those away teams who are going to start seeing your name as well. So if they're actually moving into your community or your market, they're going to know who you are. So that's a that's a really good one the other side of it you could donate time to help coach you could donate money for their road trips uh you could help with coaching um or with the the coaching staff you can also but basically you have to make sure that you understand what they need talk to the coach talk to their um the athletic directors find out what they need and how you might be able to get involved and you also want to attend games uh, I think that really helps. <laughs> okay, adopting a brick or a road or a park or a park bench, these are everywhere. Um, I see them all the time. Uh, some of the real estate companies in my area, they've donated benches. They've donated to the museum. We have uh, basically bricks at the museum that uh, different companies and individuals sponsor. Everybody has different, every area has different things like this. Uh, you can have a road sign that says this road is sponsored by your name at X brokerage, right? Now, you have to be a little careful of that for branding purposes. 
uh, if you were ever to leave your current brokerage. Uh, but ultimately, anything that's connected to you as a personal brand, it's going to uh, Park benches are another good one. The best way to start with this is to contact your city representative and find out what adoption opportunities are available. Are they doing any park updates? Um, or maybe you could even donate a set of trees, right, uh, for Arbor Day uh, or Green Up Day. There are all different things that you can do uh, to take advantage of just donating or adopting uh, in your area. This one is fun. Holding a contest or a scholarship. Um, I think that this, you can do it different ways. Number one, you can have a contest, uh, any type of contest really. It could have, it could be students uh, who have to write essays of what it means to live in your area. And you know, you can then use that content that they write to post it in your own blog, right? Um, so that, you're getting content from somebody else that you're able to use for your own marketing as well. Now, you can donate money to charities. Um, you can, uh, but in my opinion, I think offering scholarship programs can be really effective. There was an agent that I worked with a couple of years ago, or it might not have been me personally, it might have been my business partner at the time. Uh, worked with this other agent who ran a scholarship program. And in the first year, it was a $10,000 scholarship. Now that might seem like a lot of money. Maybe you should do a lower dollar amount at first. Um, but it was a $10,000 to a local high school student. Uh, and the first year he ran it, he got 1,600 applicants. And I guarantee you, every single one of those applicants, their parents knew who that agent was. In the second year, he was up to 2,500 applicants. Now he has over 5,000 applicants every single year that send into this program. And it's, a, it's an essay writing contest. Now, what you can do to build off that is you can then host a local event. You could also host it at a local business or restaurant. You could make it uh, so that it's a cash bar, so it can uh, promote, well, maybe you don't want to be drinking around high school students. I don't know. Maybe, but ways that you can help promote those local businesses at the same time and not all have to come out of your pocket. But if you host an event um, as an award ceremony of sorts for the scholarship program, where maybe the top three can, or the top three that were chosen all read their essays, something like that, you're going to get a lot of parents in the room. You're going to get a, an opportunity to promote what you do, why you do it, and why you love seeing these students succeed. And at the same time, you're getting in those parents' heads that you're there to help and that they should turn to you if they're looking to move or sell, right? Or sell or buy. Street fairs and jazz festivals, it's a great way to meet and connect with local business owners and the residents. Um, having your own booth space is great. I would suggest having a home search right on the spot. This is much than marketing, um, in my opinion. It's really just trying to get out there and make sure that you are a part of that community. Bring flyers with you. Make sure you have market watch data. Um, but when they put on these street fairs, they're always looking for vendors to get involved. This is putting money into it, but I think this is a really nice way to just show that you're going to continue to be actively involved in your community and the events that they put on. Um, Rotary clubs, chamber of commerce. Um, I'm a big uh, advocate of these. Uh, in fact, fellowship and relationships, that's the principle, the two founding principles of why Rotary began in the first place. Um, it's the ability to network with a cross-section of leaders of other businesses and professionals who all help each other and collectively help others uh, while promoting lasting friendships. I mean, at the end of the day, that sounds ideal for this business. This is, this is a relationship business. So Rotary Clubs, Chamber of Commerce, those are great ways to get out there. The next is prestige. Um, I'm just, I'm referring to some stuff I know about Rotary. I'm not personally a Rotary member, but with prestige, I know that Rotary members are prominent individuals. Um, they're leaders of the many businesses and professions that influence policy and help guide their communities. 
continuing education is another side of it. Your professional and personal knowledge will be enriched by expert speakers at their weekly luncheons. Uh, the speakers address a wide range of issues in the community, nation, world. Um, it's a really valuable one. Uh, leadership and public speaking skills. There are a ton of opportunities uh, for you to lead, speak, motivate, learn from others uh, when you get involved in the committees, the projects, and the meetings. And the last is cultural, cultural awareness. Um, it provides a unique opportunity to expand your global vision uh, and the contacts that are involved. Not to mention, if you travel to any other city throughout the country, you can go to their Rotary meetings as well and meet others. So um, if there are clubs and that fits what type of brand um, or really just the networking that you want to put out there, this is a really nice balance of community involvement and friendship. Like this is personal and professional. Sponsoring a volunteer, uh, sponsor or volunteer at hospitals, churches, schools, I can't advocate for this enough. There are so many that out there, there it's not going to be hard for you to find one that you can work with. Uh, you can help with bake sales, donations for garage sales, field trips. You can help collect money. You can um, sponsor contests or, or prize donations, or you could just put your time in. You don't know what they need. They might need um, linens folded at the hospital. They might need um, at the churches or schools. They might be doing, um, uh, I guess, promotions, not promotions, like bake sales or things to raise money. Anything that you can do to help, you should offer. Maybe it's a local dance, right? <laughs> you can always just be there and be there as a chaperone. There are all sorts of ways. That, that does end up being a little weird if you don't have your own kids in those schools, I have to say. At the end of the day, it's all about getting involved. Um, every business is a part of the community. And real estate agents are not only a part of the community, they are building the community as their job. I think that articulating that can be difficult in just marketing. This is one of those situations where it's not only what you say and what others say, it's what you do. Show that you're a part of the community. Get out there, get involved. Uh, being present is the best way to promote your business. Residents, organizations collide at, uh, at all of these community events. That's what it's all about. Uh, not to mention that your brand being everywhere uh, your residents look, or that means that they're gonna think of you when they're ready to buy or sell. Um, and it also gives you opportunities to talk to them directly while they're there. We, I think a lot of realtors have gone to the digital marketing side a lot more than the in-person, but this industry, this is a face-to-face -face industry. This is still belly to belly, toe to toe. So any opportunity you get to be toe to toe, even if you're not talking about helping them buy or sell, they know that you're there to help just like they are. They want to live in a better place and you're helping make it a better place. Supporting the local businesses, that's the same thing. You'll get a better level of service when you're there and hopefully you can find a way to keep those businesses around long towns are, are falling away. Many of you may be in cities. I live in more of a rural town setting. I think we have 10,000 people in my town. It is considered a city, but um, it's small. And there are a lot of businesses that come and they go out of business because they don't have that local support. Finding ways that you can help those businesses stay around longer, it just it's going to help the economy there. It's going to it's investing in the future of your community. It's not just about leads, it's about making sure you have a job 10 years down the road. It's about making sure those businesses stay so that the residents stay and that more residents start coming in. Uh, your direct mail your emails, your webinars, your, your websites, everything you do should be promoting your community involvement. Like I said before, there's three ways that people know you, what you say, what others say, and what you do. Well, showing them what you do is, is a way to circumvent them actually seeing you in person. Um, now, giving makes asking for their business easier. Right? At the end of the day, when you've invested your time, when you've invested your money in helping that community, it makes it a lot easier 
asking for their business when it's when they're ready to buy or sell. So, you know, because you've committed your time, you've put it out there. So uh, the best, there are others that you can do. Uh, you can talk to event centers and see what events are going on. Every community has one or two organizations or event centers that host those charity events, organizations. Ask the event center for a list of booked events. It might be worth it to pay for some space or to help sponsor the event. This is prime real estate uh, networking opportunity with the community. Um, the next is working with schools or, or youth groups. Schools present a wonderful opportunity to engage younger audiences. By engaging younger audiences, you're often engaging their parents as well. You can uh, contract schools for workshops. You can help sponsor or volunteer uh, field trips. Um, when their parents start seeing it and hearing about the fun that their kids had for these events, they, it may spark interest. But most importantly, it's about keeping your brand uh, top of mind. Um, now, you know what? I'm not going to go through each one of these. I think you get the idea. There are a lot of them. You can uh, add your logo uh, or you ask your business cards to be left at these businesses. You should attend fairs. You should attend events. Uh, I mean, really what it comes down to is making sure that you are present. That's what it's all about. And at the end of the day, that's what's going to make you successful in this business. So I've uh, gone through that presentation relatively quickly, but I hope you understand that this is one of the most important things The slides didn't, oh no, the slides didn't change. I can send out the slides to everybody. Unfortunately, I'm not able to see those notes um, during it. But, you know, I, I, hope, I hope that you all see or understand how important it is to get involved in your community. These days, um, that area better and that means that they're going to turn to you when they're ready to buy or sell their home so um anybody if anybody has any questions uh, about the presentation i will make sure that this slide deck gets out to everybody after the webinar um that's really disappointing i'm just seeing that the slides were changing uh, but you know again uh the, the Real Estate Technology Institute, we are really committed to making sure that you get um, all of information on technology at any given time um, on demand with our website. Please make sure uh, that you can, that you go through uh, the offers, go to our website, sign up for the free trial or sign up for the $4.95 for the first month. Honestly, you will not be disappointed. It's the only way that we can continue being involved. Um, and offering these free weekly webinars at 3 p.m. Eastern every single Wednesday. Uh, be sure to register for next week. I, I think it's going to be a really great one, like they are every week. But I really appreciate everybody's time. Uh, for those who were not able to see the slides, like I said, I have to make sure that the slide sets get uh, sent out to everybody so that you just have some reference and you can go back and, and think about it. Um, ultimately, I'm really proud of what I do in my community. And whether I get business from it or not, at the end of the day, I'm proud of that. And I think that that can show through or shine through in anybody's business. Um, and that's why I'm so proud. I hope you all have a great day. And um, again, I'll make sure that those slides get sent out to everybody who registered.